number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Weeks of protests that culminated into a violent takeover of the presidential palace and Ranil Vikramasinghe's house being set on fire finally brought desired results for Sri Lankans as Gotabaya Rajapaksa, who had secretly fled the country amid the turmoil, stepped down. People are now also calling for the resignation of Ranil Vikramasinghe, who has been appointed as acting president for the meantime. And while this anti-establishment struggle is being hailed as people's victory, observers say the island nation still stares at a bumpy road and it needs to tread cautiously to pull itself out of the crisis. News that Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa submitted a letter of resignation triggered jubilation in the commercial capital Colombo, where protesters massed outside the presidential secretariat, defying a citywide curfew. Crowds set off firecrackers, shouted slogans, and danced ecstatically at the Gotagogama protest site, named mockingly after Rajapaksa's first name. Rajapaksa submitted his resignation by email late this Thursday. As per different media reports, Rajapaksa fled to the Maldives on Wednesday, then headed on to Singapore on Thursday on a Saudi Arabian airline flight. Earlier, Rajapaksa's decision to make his ally Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe the acting president triggered more protests with demonstrators storming parliament and the premier's office demanding that he quit too. The whole country will celebrate today because it's a big victory. Actually, this this Rajapaksha corrupted family, we never thought we will get this country free from them. That much we were struggling and they were hitting us, they were hitting from the tear gas, they were shooting us. There are so many people who are in the hospitals, people were dying. Still, people never give up this peace process. So finally, we won one mission and there's another mission and there will be more missions on behalf of the country. We will not going to stop. We are going to protest against all of the corrupted leaders who is going to see it in the future. Thank you. Protests against the economic crisis have simmered for months and came to a head last weekend when hundreds of thousands of people took over government buildings in Colombo, blaming the Rajapaksa family and allies for runaway inflation, shortages of basic goods and corruption. Sri Lanka defaulted on its $51 billion of international debt in May after years of heavy borrowing and tax cuts by the government, plus the damaging impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of Treasury Janet Yellen urged China to be more participative in restructuring Sri Lanka's debt. Yellen said she would urge other members of the group of 20 major economies to put pressure on China to be more cooperative in long-stalled efforts to restructure the debts of countries in debt distress, including Sri Lanka. We're really looking to China to step, step up their role in debt restructurings that are eligible for treatment under the Common Framework. We've not seen much progress, and um, part of what uh, I expect to do over the next several days is um, urge our partners and in the G20 to um, put pressure on China to be more cooperative in restructuring these unsustainable debts. China is, of course, a very important creditor of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is clearly unable to repay that debt, and it's my hope that China will be willing to work with 
Sri Lanka to restructure the debt. Several experts have opined that China, which is accused of debt trap policy in Sri Lanka, must step up to assist the island. Meanwhile, India and Japan have helped Sri Lanka with the former lending $3.8 billion and Japan at least $3.5 billion. The International Monetary Fund, with which Colombo is in talks for a bailout plan, said that a $1 billion loan is in the pipeline from the rich countries too. The global lending body said it will also resume talks with Colombo and will expedite the money lending process once the island nation comes out with a plan to generate adequate revenue. Experts say while Rajapaksa's departure may herald a new political journey for Sri Lanka, it is still in a deep economic crisis and countries need to come together in order to help it. Moving on, the continuously deteriorating situation in Afghanistan has had its ripple effects on Afghans living in other countries too. For those refugees who have lived in India, the flight suspension from Kabul to New Delhi has severely affected the livelihood of hundreds of Afghans who have lost their regular customers owing to massive downfall in the number of flights. Afghan businesses in the Indian capital New Delhi have come to a standstill amidst continuously declining footfall in the market that has earned the sobriquet of Mini Kabul. Since Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan last year, flight operations for a number of countries have suffered a halt and the suspension of flights to New Delhi has taken a massive toll on Afghans living in Indian capital. India houses thousands of Afghan refugees who fled their countries when they came under the shackles of Taliban rule and faced crimes against humanity like bombings. Lajpatnagar in New Delhi is one such hub of Afghan traditions. Marketplaces which earlier used to bustle with Afghan tourists are now incurring losses owing to a decline in the movement between the two countries after the coronavirus pandemic and the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Now the flat has been closed, the hotel, the shop, the medical, all of them are going to be able to do it. Now the whole work has been done. For example, there is a sale of 10,000 sales, now there is no sale of 2,000 sales. Some of the restaurant business owners say that their sales would amount around $120 to $130 a day, but it has come down significantly, nearly five times lower to the earlier figures. And there are multiple similar stories where people have been affected. Afghans in New Delhi say they suffered multi-pronged blows as COVID-2 had taken a heavy toll on their lives. An Afghan woman and a single mother, Farida Kherkhwa, sought shelter in Delhi with her four children back in 2016 when her homeland was ravaged by militant attacks. Kherkhwa says that residing in Mini Kabul has helped her stay in touch with her roots and pass on her traditions like food, art and education to her children, which helps them feel closer to home. Afghanistan के हालात सबको पता था कि उस टाइम भी अफगानिस्तान के हालात खराब थे उस टाइम बम ब्लास्टिंग किडनैपिंग के सब थे और हालात बहुत खराब थे और एक हकेले माँ के लिए बहुत मुश्किल था अफगानिस्तान में और हम अपनी सेफ्टी के लिए हिंदी आ गए Kherkhwa now manages a women's handicraft center to help others like her connect with their traditions. The Taliban entered Kabul on August 15, 2021 after rapidly taking over much of the country, prompting chaotic scenes at the airport as crowds scrambled to escape. The crisis torn country also witnessed a massive earthquake last month which killed over a thousand people, left thousands homeless and brought the health system under huge strain. 
In such a situation, people are just hoping to receive one or the other form of international assistance so that the situation can normalize back in their country, thereby inducing a similar situation in India where they have taken refuge for years. Moving on, of all the remarkable feats India has accomplished over time, one that stands out is its digital journey. From an average data using country, India has surpassed all developing and developed nations when it comes to digitalization of its economy. From government services, businesses to even smallest of transactions, India has gone online. Today we bring you the digital growth story of India which has not just resonated with the world but has emerged as inspiring leader for countries across the world. The Indian growth story further blossomed in July of 2015 when the government of India unveiled what later turned out to be the country's most fruitful campaign, the mission Digital India. With three primary objectives that comprise the creation of a robust digital infrastructure, the streamlining of governance, and the citizens' digital empowerment, the program initially focused on enhancing the speed of communication between service providers and consumers. And with quantum leaps in the last seven years, India's digital achievements have played a pivotal role in strengthening Brand India. With a 33% year-on-year growth, the Indian market clocked over 74 billion digital payments during the 2021 to 2022 financial year. India has become the market leader in terms of digital payments. Since 2019, it has registered a phenomenal growth. According to a March 2021 report by ACI Worldwide, India topped the charts with over 25 billion online payments. China, the next closest competitor, was far behind with only 15.7 billion payments. The Digital India campaign has been a major success in India's governance model as well. The government has shifted nearly all its schemes and operations online and also added nearly 63 million micro, small, and medium enterprises into the formal economy through GST, which compelled them to embrace technology for tax filing and other purposes. This has proven to be a highly effective approach towards eliminating any systemic flaws and corruption. Today, India is home to over 100 startup unicorns with a total valuation of over 335 billion USD. And since India has prioritized a digital-first ecosystem, high-growth startups are making a beeline to set up operations in the country. The key drivers in this rapid rise include growing internet penetration, demographic dividend, increasing smartphone penetration, and India's robust IT sector. From chip makers to chai-selling entrepreneurs, from premier tech companies to small banks, Every single entity in the country is encouraging its consumers to switch to a more convenient digital method. Payments के अंदर बहुत ज़्यादा digital इस्तेमाल हो रहा है. UPI की हम बात करें या banks में भी बात करें, तो digital की तरफ customer का focus भी और rather सभी का focus बहुत ज़्यादा पड़ गया है. तो cash का भी लेन देन कम हुआ है, तो उसका effect ही है कि हम लोग काफी चीजें जो हैं cash free हो गए, उसके हमारे जो frauds होते हैं, वो कम हो गए उसकी वजह से customer के लिए बहुत convenient हो गया है. When the COVID-19 pandemic took a massive toll on people across the world, the Digital India campaign helped in soothing some anxieties of people in India. With high mobile adoption rates, citizens can access vital help by tapping on their phone screens. The government not only launched applications to keep the pandemic at bay, but also provided real-time information in order to avoid chaos and panic. The government's Arogya Setu app which provided real-time COVID updates, healthcare guidance, and vaccination assistance, set the gold standard across the world on how government and technology can work to help its citizens. India's sophisticated Cohen platform, with its easy user interface and robust security backend to protect users' data, won plaudits across the world. Over a dozen countries reached out to the Indian government to help build similar citizen-first centric apps. India's digital story has set an example for the world 
and has put India on the path to breach the trillion dollar mark in its economic growth. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. U.S. President Joe Biden said he would use force as a last resort to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon as he began a trip to the Middle East. Speaking in an interview with Israel's Channel 12 TV that was recorded before he left Washington, Biden said he would keep Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps on the U.S. foreign terrorist organization's list even if that killed off the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. Meanwhile, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi said that the Islamic Republic will have a harsh and regrettable response to any mistake committed by Washington or its allies. Washington and Israel have long expressed concerns over Iran's nuclear capabilities. Iran, however, insists it never had any ambition to make a nuclear bomb. China's economic growth slowed sharply in the second quarter, expanding 0.4% year-on-year and missing expectations, official data showed as widespread lockdowns to curb record COVID cases hit industrial activity and consumer spending. Gross domestic product had been forecast to expand 1% in the April-June quarter from a year earlier, slowing significantly from 4.8% in the first quarter. GDP grew 2.5% for the first half of the year, official data showed. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, however, GDP fell 2.6% in the second quarter compared with expectations for a 1.5% decline and a revised 1.4% gain in the previous quarter. Full or partial lockdowns were imposed in major centres across the country in March and April, including the commercial capital Shanghai. The hologram technology produces 3D visual effect by reflecting light. This holographic image moves three-dimensionally and even shows all the details. Metaverse technology, which uses virtual reality space for business, is attracting attention worldwide. ペッパーズゴーストっていう原料を使ってまして、上から投影したものがこの斜めの面に対して反射をして奥の方に映って見える。それで浮いて見えるようになってます。それを我々はま擬似的なホログラムとして呼ばせてもらってます。空中に浮
not only in the fields of disaster management and logistics, but also in other fields leading to raise up the bottom line of each industry. Moving on. India's northeastern state of Tripura recently got immersed in the celebrations of the much-awaited Kharchi festival. Involving the worship of 14 gods, the week-long event is a long royal ritual that attracts thousands of people. Every year on the eighth day of the new moon in the month of July, India's Tripura state gets soaked in the colourful celebrations of the famous Kharchi festival. Predominantly a tribal festival, but it owes its origins to the Hindu religion. Devotees and sadhus across India and Bangladesh take part with great enthusiasm. The rituals of holy event is held at Old Agartala in the premises of Chaturdasha Devta Temple. It involves the worshipping of 14 gods that comprise the dynastic deity of the Tripuri community. These deities only have heads and not the whole body. Derived from the word Kiya meaning earth, Karchi festival marks the cleansing of Amapechi, which is the female cycle of the earth goddess. हम हर हर रूप में ईश्वर को हम कल्पना करता है, प्रार्थना करता है। एक ही उद्देश्य है, एक ही टारगेट है कि सब ठीक ठाक रहे, अच्छा रहे। हम लोग जो आए हैं इधर हम अच्छे से बिताना चाहते हैं। फिर इस जन्म का उस पार जो है, उधर के लिए भी प्रार्थना हम करता है कि उधर भी हमको देख के रखो ईश्वर, हमको कोई कष्ट दुख ना पहुँचे। तुम्हारा ऊपर हमारा जो पूर्ण विश्वास है, इसमें हमारा मोती स्थिर रखो। on the first day of the festival, the 14 gods are taken from the temple to the Sadra River by the Chantai members. After bathing them in the holy water, they are again brought back to the temple. The deities are then decorated with various flowers and vermilion is put on their foreheads. During the puja ceremony, only the Chantai and royal family are allowed to present as the complete rituals are kept as a religious secret. The administration makes elaborate security arrangements to ensure peaceful celebration of Karchi. Though the festival customs are completely related to the authentic Tripuri traditions, however, everyone else are always welcome to enjoy the celebration. This is the first time of the festival of Karchi. This is the first time of the ये हो रहा है और यहाँ पर 14 गॉडेस टेंपल इसको बोलते हैं चौदह देवता मंदिर बोलते हैं और पिछले सात दिनों से यहाँ पर पूजा अर्चना और यहाँ पर एक विशाल मेला यहाँ पर इंतजाम किया गया है और यहाँ पर जो हमारे प्रशासन के तरफ से सरकार के तरफ से और हमारे युवा मोर्चा के भाइयों के तरफ से पुलिस और स्काउट यहाँ पर हुआ है और इसमें आकर मुझे बहुत ही अच्छा लगा और यहाँ का जो माहौल है इसमें आकर एक अलग सा एक अनुभूति होता है। As per the legend, the 3,000 years old tradition was started by the King Trilochan of Tripura, who established the 14 deities and led the Karchi Puja. Representing the rich culture of Tripura, the Kirchi festival solemnizes with the prayers for well-being of the land and people of the state. For the past several decades, the Tripura government has been bearing the festival's expenses, living up to the agreement with the erstwhile royal family of Tripura. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.